Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Jane Wyman and Ronald Reagan in Nobody Lives Forever. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of the pictures I directed at Warner Brothers some time ago included in its cast two young, talented players destined not only for triumphant screen careers, but also for a happy married life together. They were, as you've already guessed, the stars of tonight's Lux Radio Theater play, Ronald Reagan and Jane Wyman. They bring you Warner Brothers' recent screen hit, Nobody Lives Forever, an exciting drama of what happens when love complicates the intrigues of a big-time racketeer. Naturally, since pictures first united us, I've always valued Jane and Ronald's friendship, and I'm grateful to Lux Toilet Soap for bringing us together in another dramatic venture. But in a larger sense, that's what Lux does every week for millions of people. Brings them together in a common liking for good plays, fine stars, and for the product that makes possible these Monday night reunions, Lux Soap. I'm sure that latter preference is well rewarded. Our clock says curtain time, and here's act one of Nobody Lives Forever, starring Jane Wyman as Gladys Halverson and Ronald Reagan as Nick Blake. <laughs> Through the night, several hours out of New York, a fast train speeds westward. In a Pullman compartment, two men have sat in silence for some time. But silence is something that Al Doyle can't endure for very long. You like your dinner, Nick? You save a pretty good meal on this train, huh? Yeah, it was okay. Feeling all right? I'm feeling fine. Uh, Nick, you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Why should I mind? Go ahead. <laughs> I don't get it, Nick. When I started asking you questions before, you, you got sore. You clammed right up. Well, try me now. Well, for one thing, what are we doing on this train? We're going to California. Yeah, that much I can read off the tickets. But, uh, but why, Nick? Why California? Well, like I said, I'm tired. I want a vacation. I've been two years in the Army overseas and eight weeks in the hospital. Yesterday, the Army says I'm a civilian again. Okay, I want to relax for a while. Yeah, I know, Nick, I know, but what's the matter with some place closer to New York? Nick, the town is buzzing. I, I never seen so many square johns with loose dough in my life. The boys are making takes you wouldn't believe, and in very few beefs. Well, why'd you come with me then, Al? Why leave the gold mines? Ah, oh, because you're the smartest operator i ever seen. Because you always cut me in on all your deals. I'm dumb, but not that dumb to shake you loose, Nick. And let me handle things my own way, Al. I, uh, I still got one question left, Nick. What about her? What about Penny? You saw her last night, didn't you? Yeah, I saw Penny. Al, you didn't see much of her while I was in the Army, huh? Oh, now and then, Nick. <laughs> she don't like me. I had some dough when I went overseas. $50,000. I turned it all over to her. You what? You gave that thing... She was going to hold it for me. Except last night she told me it was gone. She'd opened up that nightclub and lost it all. Lost it? Oh, Nick, that place is doing great. Every nightclub's doing great. How could she lose 50,000 bucks? Eddie King. Eddie King? And he said that when she went broke, he took the place over. But he did more than take over the nightclub. He took over Penny, too. Did she tell you that? She didn't have to tell me. Huh. No doll, no girl. And you let him get away with it. Depends how you look at it, Al. From where I sit, I'm happy just to be alive. I feel okay. Yeah, I guess Eddie King feels okay, too. That I'm not so sure about. Ah, so you beat up on him. What good did it do you? You can't eat it. Since when? Here, look. Huh? Open up the envelope. Go ahead. Hey, Nick. Nick, this is money. All this dough. Where'd you get it? Mr. King kicked in. Oh, how can you do this to me? Why didn't you tell me? 60,000 bucks, Al. My original 50 plus interest. Well, what do you know? And, and me thinking that army life had slowed you down. <laughs> okay, Nick, what do we do when we get to California? We take it easy. I'll rent a place down by the ocean and lap up that sunshine. I'd also like to see an old friend of mine, Pop Gruber. Remember him? That old has-been? In my book, he's okay. 
You know what he's doing now? He wrote me last Christmas. There's a park somewhere near the station in L.A. Pop's got a telescope in the park. Ten cents to look at the moon. Grubbing for dimes. You know, the first thing I'm going to do when we get to California, I'm going to look at the moon. Scope, see the wonders of nature. Only dime, folks. One dime. See the mountains of the moon. And what do you see, mister? Where I come from, it used to be a nickel. And when I come from, guys like you... Nick. Nick, how are you, boy? I'm fine, Pop. How's the telescope racket? <laughs> looking up, Nick, looking up. Where'd you come from? Just got off the train. Thought I'd check up on you. Oh, am I glad to see you. And what happened, Nick? You lay him out of the army? No, I talked him into a discharge, Pop. Talked your way out, eh? <laughs> Same old Nick. You here alone? Al Doyle's with me, waiting in a cab. Pop, I wanted to thank you for the box you sent me. You know, you and Al were the only guys that remembered me while I was across. Oh, forget it. Nick, what are you doing out here? You got something lined up? Not a thing. All I want to do is rest. Well, where are you going to be staying? I'll let you know as soon as we settle down. You'll come out, Pop. We'll split a bottle of beer, huh? Oh, I sure like to, Nick. Well, I'll look you up in a day or two. So long, Pop. Gosh. Uh, how about it, folks? See the wonders of nature? Just a dime, folks. Just ten cents. Hello, Pop. I'm working when you beat it. I just seen something better in the moon. It didn't cost me nothing. I said blow. Nick Blake, huh? What's he up to, Pop? He ain't up to nothing. And if he was, you don't think I'd tell you, do you? <laughs> it's okay, Pop. But I better tell Doc Jensen that Nick Blake just come to town. <laughs> Doc, relax. No use getting all worked up all the time. No use, huh? No use when there's a $2 million sucker just waiting for us. I can't sleep at night thinking about it. But look at me. No front, no clothes, no nothing. Hanging on in the third-rate hotel just like... I've just been down around the park. i seen someone there, Doc. You remember Nick Blake? i seen him buzzing Pop Kruber. Nick Blake. He used to be a pet hate, you, not he, Doc? Yeah, how come, Doc? He's a top man in the racket, ain't he? Top man, my foot, he'll get caught up with. They never caught him yet. I used to know Blake around Broadway. Dames used to go for him like he was... Swell-headed phony. Wait a minute, Doc. We could use a guy like Blake. That uh, dame with the two million bucks? I'll make a play myself. But I need a bankroll first. I've told you both a dozen times, front. I gotta have front, and that takes money. We know you could make the play, Doc, but I was just thinking, somebody like Blake, see... Maybe you could talk him into staking us. It's possible. He's not so hard to break down. Just a lucky small-timer with a front, that's all. Huh. What's the meaning of that? Small-timer? Blake? You heard me. When I first saw him, I had a suite in the best hotel in Miami, and he was knocking around trying to pick up the crumbs. Oh, maybe so, Doc. I don't, I don't like don't... the guy, and I never did. Don't you right. We could use him. I can forget my pride when I have to. Okay, I'll go have a talk with Pop Gruber. Hello, Pop. Huh? Where you been the last two days, huh? Been looking for you. I ain't been around, Doc. You went here last night. I thought you'd come in every night for a beer. Well, I'm here now, ain't I? Drink up, huh? Buy another one. I only drink two beers a night. This is my second. Now. Nick Blake's in town. Yeah? He's in town. Matter of fact, I was with him last night. I've located the sucker, Pop. Blake might be interested in financing the project. Forget it. Look, this is the biggest thing there is. All I we tell need you, is... it's no use. It'll be worth 500 to you if I can find him. Because you got 500. I will have, and you know you can trust me. Doc, you and Wendy and Shake haven't seen five C's in five years. We all have our ups and downs. That was the biggest there was once. Yeah, once don't count. Well, I guess I'll call it a night. Now, wait a minute. Look, Pop. I found a widow with two million bucks, and she's very lonesome. The easiest touch there is. Doesn't know a soul out here. I tell you, Doc, Nick's taking it easy. Besides, he'd never work with you. I've been living for this one, Pop. I'm going to see that that sucker gets taken no matter what. A small bankroll's all I need to put me right back where I was, on top. That's where I belong, and you know it, right on hey, top. Not so loud, Doc. Take it easy. Take it easy? Well, there's two million bucks begging for a sleigh ride? Maybe I will have another beer. Uh, what else do you know about this widow? <laughs> Call me, Al? Come here, Nick. We, we got company. Uh, didn't expect me back so soon, did you, Nick? Well, Pop, fine. I just been in for a swim. Sit down, Pop. Uh, this sure is some swell to help, Nick. House like this, 
Ocean, right at your door. <laughs> well, don't blame you for wanting to take it easy. You're itching to spill something, Pop. Oh, you're too young to take it easy, Nick. In spite of all these high income taxes, $2 million is still a lot of money. How much did you say? Come on, Pop, open up. Well, there's a nice $2 million job in town, but Nick would rather go in swimming. All right, Pop, put on the con. I used to be a pretty fair confidence man in the old days, Nick, but age caught up with me, just like it does to all of us. Who sent you to see me? As far as I can make out, this is a right touch, and a guy like you, Nick, could turn it in a month. Go on. Go on, we'll listen. It seems as a widow. Come out a few weeks ago from Minneapolis. That's a switch taking a widow. Nick, at least listen to This her. widow can stand a take. She's loaded. You can set yourself for life, Nick, and you'd be helping me out, too. I'm sure getting tired of that ten-cent telescope. And picking pockets while the customers are looking at the moon. Well, I'm getting old. I do the best I can. This, this widow now, she, she's living at the Marwood Arms. Her husband died a year or so ago, and she's lonesome. Why, it's just your day. The swimming was sure swell today, Pop. All right, Nick, if I'm born, you... No, no, Pop, wait. Nick, please. It's okay, Al. Nick always was stubborn as a mule. I've done all right, haven't I? Yes, you've done all right. When I was your age, I had the world by the tail, too. Making plenty of money and throwing it out the window just like you're doing. I thought there was no end to it. All right, look at me now. Don't get sore, Pop. You, maybe you got a bankroll. Living like this, how long is it going to last? What are you going to be doing when you're 65, Nick? Selling pencils? I don't think it'll ever come to that. I didn't think it would either. So long, Nick. Pop, stay for dinner. We got a good cook. No, no, I, uh, I got to get back to town. Well, not on a bus anyway. Drive him in, Al. Sure. I'll get the car, Pop. No hard feelings. I think you're making a mistake, Nick. But no. No hard feelings. Sit down, Nick. You've been pounding that carpet ever since dinner. I've been jumpy all evening. Well, have a drink and relax. Was the idea coming here, wasn't it? Sometimes ideas don't work out. Yeah, you said it. Look at Pop's idea for making a big roll. That sure blew fast. This afternoon, I thought you were crazy for nixing it. But I I guess you were right. Why? Well, that proposition's pretty big, Nick. You've been away a long time. Don't be dumb. It'd be like rolling downhill. Well, listen, Nick, if you never want to work another deal, that's okay with me. We got plenty of dough. Only it's, uh, it's a shame to see a guy like you throwing away his talent. Oh, but don't let me or Pop influence you. Get the car, Al. Where are we going? To see Pop. <laughs> now you're talking, baby. Take it easy. I'm curious, that's all. Just curious. That's the whole story, Nick. I can set up a meeting with Doc and his boys any time you say. Tomorrow, Nick. Uh, there's a lot about this I don't like. Most of it, Doc Ganson. Yeah, there's sort of a cafe on Main Street, Nick. Uh, be a good place to meet. There's a little private room where we can talk tomorrow, huh? Thursday. I want to look around first. Thursday night. Well, here he is, Doc. Here's Nick and Al. Told you Nick could be here. Hiya, Blink. Let's skip everything else, Doc, except what I'm here for. So it's me, Nick. Sit down, boys. Pop's information was a little sketchy. I've been doing some investigating on my own. What do you mean, Pop's information? I located this. I stirred it. That's understood, but just to get it straight, the sucker's name is Mrs. Gladys Halverson, widow. Husband, Carl Halverson, died about a year ago and left her a fortune which amounts to $2 million. She's staying at the Marwood Arms in Suite 901. Anything else, Doc? No. I guess that about covers it. Not quite. What you didn't find out is that her business advisor is out here with her. A guy by the name of Manning. He's also staying at the Marwood Arms, which may make it a little tough. Any questions, Doc? No. Look, I'm figuring on handling this case myself. All we want from you is a stake. Pop worked this pretty smooth. He got me interested in the pitch before he told me who lined it up. If he'd mentioned your name at the start, I'd have said no. Is that plain enough? Now, if you guys want me to handle Shake it... Shake your meal with you, Mr. Blake. All right. Now, a couple of more things. I operate alone. No interference of any kind. None, as long as we're satisfied. After all, it's our pitch. Listen, you. I'll make you a present of it right now. Oh, don't mind Doc, Mr. Blake. He's just anxious. How about terms? You guys located the sucker? Fine. But I got to finance the job, do all the work, take all the risk. I want two-thirds. Two-thirds? That's the only way I'll operate. At least one-third for shaking one day and me. Yeah, a third or something is better than all or nothing. No. Though. No, if it hadn't been for me, there wouldn't be any deal. I had the connections. I found the setup. It belongs to me. Nobody's going to jip me out of what's mine. Nobody. That suits me fine. I don't want to work anyway. Shaking me's got something to say about this, Doc. Say it fast, then. I, what do you figure the take will be? With that kind of money, at least 100000 Uh, Will you guarantee us 30000 If I make the take, yes. Okay. 
We'll go along with you. And that's it, Doc. Ten G's apiece. That's a lot of money. I guess we can go now, Al. Come on, Pop, you too. You were smart to say yes, Doc. Was I? I'm not so sure. Five years ago, I wouldn't have let a mug like that shine my shoes. Now you guys treat him like he was somebody important. Uh, don't worry, Doc. He'll come too. If he wants to keep his health, he better come through. That's all I got to say. He better come through. In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Nobody Lives Forever. Meanwhile, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. What have you been up to, Libby? Indulging in a bit of nostalgia, Mr. Keeley. Out at 20th Century Fox today, I saw the dismantled set they used for their current release, Nightmare Alley. Now I know why you feel nostalgic. It was the carnival set. Yes, Mr. Keeley. Remember what fun we all had visiting that huge set? There were ten acres of Complete it. Complete with sideshows, barkers, hot dog and taffy stands. <laughs> I even tried my hand at a little ring tossing. <laughs> you and many a famous Hollywood star, Mr. Keeley. Some of the stars brought their children to enjoy the fun of the midway. That was a colorful, light-hearted background for a rather grim story. Yes, Nightmare Alley is a tough, realistic drama of carnival life. It's really a study of a scoundrel. Tyrone Power, by the way, does a fine job in the role of a hard-boiled circus roustabout. An irresistible scoundrel, though, Mr. Keeley, with no less than 28 love scenes in the picture. A divided, I hasten to add, among three leading ladies. Yes, there's certainly plenty of feminine charm. Joan Blondell, Colleen Gray, Helen Walker. An interesting contrast of types, don't you think, Mr. Kennedy? Yes, uh, each very appealing in a different way. But there's one similarity about them that struck me, Libby. You mean, of course, that all three have lovely luxe complexions. Then I'd be right, wouldn't I? A hundred percent. Those three beautiful stars all use luxe toilet soap regularly. You know what a forthright person Joan Blondell is. Yes? Well, when I asked her about her complexion care, she said, A Lux girl? You bet I am. Active lather facials really work for me. Lux soap beauty facials do make skin lovelier, all right. Skin specialists proved it. In three out of four cases, daily Lux soap care made skin softer, smoother. The fact that so many famous stars recommend Lux toilet soap shows how right it is for delicate skin. Now, there's a beauty counsel for lovely ladies everywhere. Why not make fragrant white Lux toilet soap your daily beauty soap? Remember, it's Hollywood's own complexion care, the choice of nine out of ten lovely stars. We return you to William Keeley. We continue with the second act of Nobody Lives Forever, starring Ronald Reagan as Nick and Jane Wyman as Gladys Halverson. For two days now, Nick Blake and Al Doyle have been occupying one of the most expensive suites in the very exclusive Marwood Arms Hotel. Purposely, Nick has avoided any contact with the affluent widow, Mrs. Halverson, or her business manager, Charles Manning. But now at the dinner hour, Nick plans his first move. Now get this straight, Al. I'm not Nick Blake anymore. I'm Nicholas Lloyd. I'm in the shipping business. Okay, and I'll... okay. We've been through all that a hundred times. You're Mr. Lloyd, and I'm your secretary, Albert Hall. Check. There's something else I won't forget. These rooms are costing 50 bucks a day. I'm going down to the dining room now. Give me time to eat and then come down with this envelope. And watch your language. You're supposed to be a secretary. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Halverson. Good evening, Mr. Evans. Good evening, Mr. Manning. Is everything satisfactory? Excellent dinner, Mr. Evans. Thank you. If there's anything else at all that you wish, please let me know. Uh, now then, where was I, Gladys? Oh, yes, the 17th hall. I said to the caddy, my mashy niblick, please. I played a little to the right for the wind, of course. Of course. I took a full swing, and what do you suppose happened? Don't tell me you made it in par. No, I lost the ball. Don't know where it went. Never did find it. Wait till tomorrow, though. I'll wager that I... beg I... your pardon, Mr. Manning. Oh, yes? Uh, my name is Lloyd. I believe I owe you an apology. Apology? The manager, Mr. Evans, tells me he tried to introduce us in the lobby this morning. I misunderstood. I must have walked right past you. I hope I didn't seem rude. Oh, no, not at all. Oh, Mrs. Halderson, Mr. Lloyd. How, How do you do? do? Uh, won't you sit down? Well, if I'm not intruding, I don't want to make another mistake. You're not intruding at all. Thank you. Mr. Evans tells me you've been out here for some time, Mrs. Halverson. Yes, and I may stay indefinitely. 
such a beautiful place. Your first trip to Los Angeles? Yes. Wonderful climate here, Mr. Lloyd. Fine for golfing. Golfer's paradise, I call it. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Lloyd. Yes? Oh, uh, my secretary, Mr. Hall, Mrs. Halverson, Mr. How Manning. Do you? How do you do, Mr. Hall? Uh, this envelope just arrived, sir. Adams and Company, huh? Better send them a wire, Albert. Tell them I can't possibly give an answer till the end of the week. Uh, yes, Mr. Lloyd. Excuse the interruption, please. Business. It's always something. I'm afraid I'm finding it a little difficult to adjust myself after the Army. Oh? Were you overseas? Yes. Cigarette? Thank you. I've leased a house out at the beach, and I was planning to spend the whole day there tomorrow, just lying in the sand doing nothing, not even thinking. That sounds wonderful. I haven't been to the beach since I came here. No, no, I... Waste of time for me, you know. I play golf every day. Oh. Well, I was going to suggest you both drive out to the beach with me. Well, I'd better be running along. If I want to take a day off tomorrow, I'll have to work tonight. Mr. Evans mentioned your work to me. Uh, shipping business, I think he said. Well, yes, in a way. Just before the war, I got interested in maritime salvage, deep sea tugs. Should be very big once things settle down again, you see. Well, excuse me for talking, shop. This has really been very pleasant. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Mr. Lloyd. Odd sort of chap, isn't he? Deep sea salvage. Sounds like an interesting project. Too bad he doesn't play golf. Charles. Uh, yes, Gladys? Do you mind if I have a brandy? Why, Gladys, you haven't had... Why, of course. How nice to see you enjoying yourself. A waiter. <laughs> Come on, Al, let's go down and have breakfast. Oh, how come so early? Because I want to be down there when she comes in. We'll eat in the patio. <laughs> you know, Nick, that dame sure surprised me. She's a dish. You just don't figure a rich widow's going to look like that. Bring all those phony letters and photographs along. We'll be cleaning up a few little business matters over our ham and eggs. <laughs> ah, I saw the life sure agrees with me, Nick. Look at me, eating breakfast with the birds and the bees. I never did this in New York. I thought you missed New York. Me? Oh, no. Little, maybe. Uh, hey, Nick, I, I wonder how Penny's doing these days. What makes you think of Penny? Mm, nothing, nothing at all. I, I was just wondering. Then stop wondering. It's one dame who can take care of herself. I hope I never see her again. And speaking of dames, here she comes, the widow. Then get in the act. Okay. It appears that several of these matters, Mr. Lloyd, have come under the jurisdiction of the Coast Guard. If it's satisfactory to you, sir, I'll wire Commander Appleton that we're... Oh, good uh, morning, Mrs. Halverson. Well, good morning. Uh, lovely morning, isn't it? Uh, won't you join us for breakfast? Well, you seem very busy. Nonsense. Put away the correspondence, Albert. Yes, sir. I'm always looking for an excuse to quit work. A uh, waiter? Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Halverson would like to order. Oh, yes. I'll have the usual, please. Yes, Mrs. Halverson. As soon as I'm through with my correspondence, I'm going out to the beach. How nice. I don't suppose you could persuade Mr. Manning to give up one morning of golf. I doubt it very much. He'd be upset the whole afternoon. Oh, well, there you are. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Mr. Manning. I just talked to Mr. Peterson, Gladys. He's waiting for me at the Meadowbrook Club. Wants me to have breakfast with him. I was wondering if you'd no, like to... No, thank you, Charles. You run along. I feel so guilty leaving you alone every day. I, I do wish you... Oh, uh, those are photographs, Mr. Lloyd. Are those the tugboats? These? Oh, yes, yes. Hmm. Had no idea they're so large. Well, this is the deep sea type, about 300 tons. Oh, salvage, huh? Should be a tremendous business. Very interesting. Well, Gladys, I really should be getting along. Mrs. Halverson, why don't you come to the beach with me? Well, thank you. I, I'd like to very much. Fine. That's a good idea. Well, have a nice time. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Charles. Can you be ready in an hour? I can be ready right after breakfast. Call the house, Albert. Tell him we'll be down around 11. <laughs> It was heavenly. I don't remember when I've enjoyed a swim so much. Well, sit down. Dry off. Oh, what a charming sun deck. I see. Albert's fixed us a drink. Here. Thank you. You know, when I was a kid, I used to dream about having a house right on the ocean. Do you blame me for wanting to spend all my time here? I certainly don't, Mr. Lloyd. What are you thinking about? About you. It's difficult to picture you as a boy. Am I as solemn as all that? Oh, of course not. I, I just mean you appear so sure of yourself. As if you could... Well, take care of yourself, no matter what the surroundings were. I was brought up in a tough school, a riverfront kid in New York. You had to fight or run. I guess I did a little of both, and I learned which to do when. I'll never forget those days. Don't stop. 
very interesting. It may sound interesting, but it wasn't. All I thought about was getting out. The time I was 13, I was working on a tugboat. I got kicked around plenty, but I learned the business. When the war started, I was practically running the company. Then you've done very well, haven't you? And you can't be more than what? 31, 2? 34. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a lot better. <laughs> well, now I'm bragging. Now you have a right to. I, I really don't know why I'm telling you these things. Well, please do. I don't talk much myself, but I like to listen. Well, I like to hear myself talk, so we should get along all right. <laughs> This has been quite the nicest day I've had in a long, long time. Doesn't take much to please you. No, no, not much. I've been around so little. My husband was never in really good health, so we said seldom traveled. He liked to sit at home and read a book or listen to the radio, so not that I minded. I was happy to do whatever he wanted. You better not let other wives hear you saying that or they'll put you out of the union. Oh, I didn't feel as though I'd missed anything. He depended on me a great deal. You see, before we were married, I was his secretary. Well, you're not exactly my idea of a secretary. Well, that's because you think of me as a well-to-do woman. But it wasn't always like that. My father... Well, I think I'll say what you said. I don't know why I'm telling you all these things. I don't know when I felt more like listening. <laughs> you don't have to be polite, Mr. Lloyd. I'm sure that all this is a little too quiet for you, isn't it? Oh, and don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that you're fast. It's just that you seem a little less conventional than most of the men I've met. <laughs> Well, don't tell on me, will you? Mr. Manning might not like it. <laughs> well, I, I'd better start thinking about getting back to town. Oh, of course. It'll be nice driving back. The sun's just going down. The hills will be beautiful. Hello, Pop. Huh? Yeah, what do you want? What do you heard? About what? Talk clean, Doc. About the deal, Nick and the dame. Listen, Doc. I'm waiting just like you are. Except I'm not worried. When would you talk to him last? What is this? I come here to enjoy a glass of beer after work. Now, stop bothering. Look, you. It's not healthy to talk to me like that. I've talked like that to tougher guys than you. I'm past 60 and I'm still here. Nick Blake met Mrs. Harbison 10 days ago. He's been with her practically every day since. Sometimes with that Manning guy, sometimes alone. Well, it's fine. Is it? Blake's playing this dame as if he were more interested in her than in her money. He's forgetting business. I don't know what he's doing, see? But whatever it is, Nick ain't forgetting business. I got just one more thing to say. You tell that friend of yours if he doesn't get busy, I'm You got I'm anything gonna... to say, you tell it to Nick, see? And while I'm talking, I might as well tell you this. I'm sorry I got Nick tied up with you. From now on, you stay away from me, you understand? Come in. Oh, hello, Manning. Where's Gladys? In her rooms, I believe. I just thought we might have a little chat, you and I, before we go to the races. Fine. Uh, Lloyd, um, I've been giving a lot of thought to that salvage business of yours. Really? I'm afraid I've been neglecting it. Uh, look, uh, we're both businessmen, so I'll come right to the point. I'm looking for some good, solid investments for Mrs. Halverson. Now, I don't know much about the shipping business, but if there's any... You mean you'd like to invest in our company? I'd certainly like to consider it. But we don't need any money, Manning. We're subscribed to the limit right now, and I'm not going to sell any stock. I'm not afraid of that. I'd like to accommodate you, of course, but you see, I have a partner in New York. Oh, I don't know. I suppose I could ask him to do me a favor. I'm phoning him tomorrow. That's very decent of you, Lloyd. Thanks. I'll let you know what he says. Oh, I, uh, I'll pick you and Gladys up in half an hour. Well, what is it this afternoon, Nick? The races again like yesterday? I doubt it. She doesn't like crowds. Ah, it's good. It's fine. Maybe the beach, maybe just a drive. I don't know. Manning tagging along? Uh-uh. Just Gladys and me. I'll be back for dinner. Hey, what's your rush? She's waiting for me in the lobby. Uh, Nick, uh, Pop called this morning. I'm meeting him this afternoon in that cafe downtown. Pop says Doc's getting awful jumpy. Let him jump. Oh, Doc's a bad boy, Nick. Not very. I, uh, I'm getting a little jumpy myself. Take an aspirin. Oh, Pop's no fool, Nick. If he's worried, there's something to worry about. They figure you're not bearing down hard enough on this take. A deal like this takes time. Nick, you, you sure you're not going overboard for this tomato? Look, I'm going downstairs. No, she can wait a minute. If Doc figures he's getting sold, he's going to blow the top right off. Oh, this is what comes from getting mixed up with a bunch of small-time chiselers. Always hungry, always scared. You know something? I think for once, Pop conned me into a bad one. But our door's going like confetti, Nick. Look at these rooms in the house at the beach. It's my own door I'm spending, remember? Come on, we can talk in the elevator. i never seen you so excited over a dame, Nick. Not even Penny in the old days. Go on, ring for the elevator. 
I'm very sorry, miss. I just called Mr. Lloyd's suite, but there's no answer. I see. Well, would you mind leaving word that I stop by? Miss Adams, Penny Adams. I'd be very glad to. If you'd care to wait, though, I'm sure Mr. Lloyd hasn't left the hotel. What do you mean? He's probably on his way downstairs. Oh, I'll wait for him here, then. Oh, why, there he is now, Miss Adams, just getting out of the elevator. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Nick, Nick, look. What's the matter with you? Over there at the desk. Ain't that Penny? Penny. Go in the writing room, Al. That's where I'm supposed to meet Mrs. Halverson. Stall her in there. Yeah, sure, I'll stall her. This deal's really gone anyway. Nicky, darling. All right, Penny, what do you want? Oh, well, that's a nice greeting. Why don't we sit down somewhere and talk? How did you find me? Well, if you're really interested, I happen to run into Doc Ganson. Oh, don't worry, darling. I won't give you away. Look, I'm busy. I haven't any time. You better take time, Nick. You wouldn't jip a pal like me, would you? I'd jip you. I took my dough back, if that's what you mean. And after you did, the nightclub folded. And Eddie King ran out on you? I ran out on him. Get wise to yourself, Penny. We're washed up. You took care of that. The brush-off's not that easy, Nick. I told you. I've seen Doc Ganson. I... Well, who's the lady with Al? Oh, so that's the sucker, huh? Nice work if you can get it. So long, Penny. Mr. Hello, Gladys. Did I keep you waiting? Oh, that's all right, Nick. Oh, Albert, uh, Miss Adams over there. I think she wants to talk to you. Uh, yes, Mr. Lloyd. I'll take care of her right away. If I've interrupted something... Oh, it's I... nothing important. Let's go, Gladys. My car's at the side entrance. Where's he going, Al? Uh, take it easy, babe. They can have you thrown right out of here. That dame. She's batty about Nick, I can tell. Come on, let's take a walk. Why? I don't like this rush act. You should have thought of that when you had Nick's roll. There's a big deal on Penny, so keep your nose out of it, or... Oh, what? What'll you do, Al? Go on, I'd like to know. Nick, tell me to mind my own business if you wish, but that girl in the lobby just now, you were rude to her. That's not like you. I just didn't want to talk to her. If I was rude, I'm sorry. Well, here's the car. Are we going to the beach? Unless you have a better idea. I have an idea. I don't know if it's any better. I'll drive and don't ask any questions. Okay. I bounced all through Italy in a Jeep, so why should I worry about your driving? <laughs> now, just for that, I'll run you into a tree. Nick, I've made a mistake. I'm sorry. Sorry? What do you mean? My brilliant idea, driving you down here to see San Juan Capistrano. Well, I think it's a very interesting mission. If you want to see the rest of it, I'll be glad to. No, Nick. It... Let's just walk for a while. You don't like the mission at all. I'm afraid I've wasted your afternoon. No. No, it isn't that, Gladys. It's just... What is it, Nick? You're depressed. Well, it's just that seeing all this reminds me of Italy. The churches I saw there. Except they were all wrecked. Holes in the roof, statues all over the floor, paintings ripped to pieces. Everything's smashed. Nick. It's all right. Maybe I forgot about what I saw too quickly. It all comes back with such a jolt. It's too bad people can't get along. The world's a pretty nice place if you're happy. Are you happy? I wasn't. When? Until I met you. I love you, Gladys. Oh, Nick. Nick, I've been waiting for you. It seems... All my life, I've been waiting for you. Just a minute, Nick. Doc, are you crazy? What are you doing here? I've been hanging around this corridor for an hour. I want to talk to you. Why? Because I'm also interested in Mrs. Halverson. Suppose we close the door. I'm tired of getting pushed off on Island Pop. I got only one thing to tell you. Penny was here early this afternoon. Yeah, she told me she wanted to see you. Just don't give her any more ideas. She could queer this deal awful fast. I can handle Penny. I can handle the deal, too. You got to stop fooling around and get on to business. That Halverson dame's gone to your head. All right, I'm through, then. The job's all yours. I never wanted it from the start. The further I get into it, the less I like it. Now, be... No, 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 no. Wait a minute, Nick. Uh, uh, suppose the boys may hold off for another week. Huh? I already turned it back to you. It's yours. No, no, no. M maybe you're right. Uh, maybe you do need more time. Then lay off of me. Okay. Just don't pull any fast ones. Are you threatening me? Keep your hands off of me, Nick. You come up with a rod and I'll make you eat it. I only use a rod as a last resort. All right, work fast. Charles, come in. 
Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you. I was with Peterson all afternoon. Well, how was your drive? Wonderful. We went... Oh, Charles, what a beautiful orchid. I thought you might like to wear it at dinner. Now, Charles, I, I'm afraid I won't be able to have dinner with you after all. You see... Lloyd? Yes. He'll be here any minute. Well, Gladys, I... Well, frankly, I'm a little worried. What about? About him. Lloyd. Just now, in the lobby, a man brushed by me, getting out of the elevator. The elevator boy told me he was up here seeing Lloyd. Well? He also told me he'd seen this man before, in Miami. A gambler at the racetrack. Very unsavory. Oh, I wouldn't condemn him just because he knows such a man. But what about him? Actually, Gladys, Lloyd's a stranger. We're taking him at his own evaluation. We know absolutely nothing about him. I know one thing, Charles. I'm happy. I've never been as happy in my entire life. I'll run along, Gladys. Maybe I'll see you later in the evening. I hope so, Charles. Thank you for the lovely orchid. Hello? Hello, desk. This is Charles Manning. Get me the district attorney's office. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, you'll hear Act Three of Nobody Lives Forever. We all know how Texans feel about Texas, and I'm sure our guest tonight, the young screen star Dorothy Malone, is no exception to the rule. <laughs> I think my home state is the greatest place in the world, Mr. Keeley, except perhaps Hollywood. Well, Hollywood is certainly enthusiastic about you, Dorothy. You have a Warner Brothers contract to prove that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Keeley. It is thrilling to be working in a great studio in contact with the famous stars I've always admired. I learned a lot about acting when I watched them film Escape Me Never. Ah, yes. Warner Brothers' dramatic life of a composer with Errol Flynn as the romantic musician. <laughs> and don't forget the two lovely women in the picture. Well, when they're Ida Lupino and Eleanor Parker, uh, how could I? <laughs> and incidentally, that story had an unusual and highly colorful background. Yes, it did. You could travel from Venice to the Austrian Alps on the sets of Escape Me Never, even though the entire picture was filmed in Hollywood. Studio technicians can work miracles. Don't you agree, John Kennedy? Yes, I do, but uh, there are times when the camera demands the genuine and real. For instance, a lovely Lux complexion. Any cameraman would agree. <laughs> That's the kind of beauty to pass the close-up test, Mr. Kennedy. Well, then, it isn't surprising that nine out of ten screen stars have made Lux toilet soap their choice for beauty care. Well, Ida Lupina and Eleanor Parker, two of the loveliest stars I know, wouldn't be without Lux Toilet Soap. I talked with Miss Lupina one day in a dressing room. She told me she was devoted to Lux Soap care. It gives my skin quick new loveliness, she said. And I know myself how really effective those facials are. Thank you, Miss Dorothy Malone. May I say that your complexion is a radiant example of what gentle Lux Soap care can do. Skin specialists confirm the effectiveness of this daily complexion care. Tests showed that in three out of four cases, skin became softer, smoother, in a short time. A beauty tip for women everywhere. Why not try fragrant white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. The curtain rises on Act Three of Nobody Lives Forever, starring Jane Wyman as Gladys Halverson and Ronald Reagan as Nick. It's about an hour later. In the Marwood Arms Hotel, Gladys Halverson is getting ready for her date with Nick. Charles Manning has just welcomed a man from the district attorney's office. And in still another suite, Nick Blake has some startling news for Al and Pop. So we're clearing out. We're going back to New York now, tonight. But what about the deal? The deal is off. I'm through. And Doc will throw a fit me. I'm going to pay him off. Windy and shake, too. This guy's off his rocker. Wait a minute. Nick, you mean she's going with us to New York? Huh? The widow, huh? I mean we're going alone. Phone Doc. Tell him to meet me tonight at that cafe, 8 o'clock. Nick, wait. Why pay off them broken-down tramps? We can just disappear. 
Should I answer that one, Pop? He's going to pay off, Hal. Nick's too big a guy to Welsh. Besides, if Doc don't get paid off, he'll take over. Phone Doc. I'm going upstairs to see Manny. I hope you don't mind coming here to my rooms, Gladys. What's so important, Charles? You sounded so mysterious on the phone just now. Gladys, this is very difficult. I just found out for sure that Mr. Lloyd is not at all what he seems. He's a professional swindler. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Surely you don't really believe that. He'll be here any second. I told him I had a check for him, that I was buying an interest for you in his salvage company. Are you trying to tell me he wants to sell us some worthless stocks or something? Exactly. And that his real name is Blake. He's a notorious confidence man. And I'll prove it to you when he takes this check. <laughs> Charles, really, really, that's absurd. Come in. Hello, Manning. Gladys, I didn't know you were going to be here. Charles asked me to come here. Well, I'm glad you are. I just received a telegram. Bad news. Oh? We can't accept your money, Manning. Things aren't going at all well in the firm. I couldn't possibly recommend an investment until I fly back and investigate. You're leaving? Tonight. Nick, will you be gone long? I don't know. I hope not. Well, this is very disappointing. Will I see you before you go? Of course. Goodbye, Manning. Goodbye, Lloyd. Well, Charles... Uh, just a minute. He's gone, Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Halverson, Mr. Johnson, district attorney's office. How do you do? That was Blake, all right, Mr. Manning. Oh, no. You must have made a mistake. No, it's no mistake, Mrs. Halverson. Well, then, arrest him. On what charge? He didn't take your money. He refused it. Well, keep in touch. If he makes another move, let me know right away. Gladys. Well, come in. Anything wrong? Nick, tell me the truth. Is your name Blake? Who told you that? Charles, and a man from the district attorney's office. Take it from me, it's true enough. Then you didn't intend seeing me again? No. But, Nick, you... Oh, there's so many things I can't understand. Don't try to. Anyway, nobody's hurt. Nobody's hurt? I'm hurt. You could have been hurt a lot worse. I'm just a guy who's been trying to take your dough, that's all. Well, then why didn't you take it ten minutes ago? You refused the money on my account, didn't you? What's the difference? You and I were... Well, we're two different kinds of people. Go home, stick to those you know. Pretty soon you'll forget all about it. I don't want to forget. Nick, I love you. I'd never change. But you have changed, Nick. We love each other. Or was that just part of the deal? No. No, it wasn't. Believe me, it wasn't. I love you, Gladys. I love you. Eight o'clock, you're right on time, Nick. All right, Doc, where's Windy and Shake? I can handle this alone. What is this? I guaranteed you guys 30% of 100,000. I got it right here. If you want to collect, call in your boy. No, that guarantee doesn't mean a thing anymore. How do I know how much the take really was? I'm telling you. I got a feeling there wasn't any take. You're trying to shake us. It's 30 G's or nothing, Doc, yes or no. Put your hands on the table, Nick. I got a gun on you. And it says from now on, I call the turn. Call it fast, then. You know, it's funny... You can get so close to something that you lose all perspective. It was Penny Adams who steered me straight. This afternoon, she put it all together for me. You pay us off in chicken feed, marry two million bucks, and live in Clover the rest of your life. Now you're really blowing your top. We figure the widow for two million. Thirty percent of that is what you owe us. That's all, huh? It's a lot of dough. But you can pay 50 G's at a time. Suppose I don't play ball. Why be us our dough? You'll have plenty. Of course, if something was to happen to you. An accident, maybe. I'd have to take over, wouldn't I? This takes a little figure in, Doc. Now, from your point of view... Uh... All right, Doc, get up. I was going to pay you off, but now you get nothing. I'll leave your gun with the cashier out there. You better keep carrying it, because if you ever cross me again or even look like it, I'll kill you. Did you pay him off? No, it's blown higher than a kite. I was afraid of that. Well, what happened? There's no time to talk. Doc will be coming out any minute. When he does, follow him in your car. I'll stick to him. And you? I'm going back to the Marwood Arms and make sure Gladys is all right. There's something queer about all this. Okay, Nick. As soon as you find out anything, call me there. Where is she, Manning? Where's Gladys? I've been trying to find you to ask that same question. You don't know? No, I don't. The desk clerk says she left with a man about an hour ago. A large man with a raspy voice. He says... Windy. 
who... Never mind. Manning, you've got to help me. I'm calling the police. No, not yet. Here's the key to my room. Go there and stay there. I'm expecting a call. If they say it's Al or Pop, tell them I'm on my way to Doc's Hotel. You got it? Uh, yes, but who... Al or Pop, Doc's Hotel. I switch off the headlights, Pop. You don't think Doc's wise that we follow him? No, no. El Dorado Hotel. I guess we just park here till Doc comes out again. Ah, Nick's probably dreaming. He's so crazy about that thing. Yeah, maybe. Nick generally knows what he's talking about. Well, I guess we just sit here and wait. So, Wendy brought her here to the room like you said, Doc. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Mrs. Halverson. Your friends say Mr. Lloyd is in trouble. That's all they'll tell me. I'm afraid that's all we know, Miss Harbison. Mr. Lloyd is in trouble and he wants to see you. Where is he? Why can't you take me to him? We'll be happy to take you to him. My car's at the curtains. Pop, look. Hmm? The dame, Mrs. Halverson. Yeah. With Doc and Wendy and Shake. They're all getting in the next car. I mean, Doc's car. We, we got to get a hold of Nick. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll follow him alone. Yeah, yeah. There's a I'm lunch gonna... wagon across the street. Wait in that lunch wagon until I call. No matter how long it takes, just get in touch with Nick. But if there's anything wrong with Nick, why didn't he telephone me? Are you sure he's all right? He's all right, Mrs. Halverson. You said we were going to the beach. We we're at the beach, lady. Nick's house is in the other direction. I'm sure of it. Nobody said we're going to Nick's house. Now relax, will you? We'll be there soon. Nick, I, I never thought you'd get here. I bet I drank a gallon of coffee waiting here in the lunch wagon. He told me on the phone Papa's going to call you. Yeah, yeah, he just did. Come on, let's lamb out of here. I'll tell you in the car. Where is she, Al? Where's Gladys? Did Pop trailed him up the coast about 30 miles. I got it all written down, Nick, all the directions. Is Gladys all right? Did Pop know? Yeah, 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 she's okay. There's a highway along the ocean. We got to look for a lighthouse. Two miles past the lighthouse is a little grocery store or something. That's where we meet Pop. I guess this is it, Nick. Two miles past the lighthouse and... Here's the store. Yeah, but it's dark. Closed for the night. Well, Pop said for sure he'd meet us at Nick. the... Pop! Where'd they take her, Pop? Now, take it easy, Nick. They got Mrs. Halverson in a shack about 300 yards from here on the beach. It's at the end of an oil dock over the water. How do you know all this? I woke up the guy in the store to use his phone. I told him I was a government investigator checking up on oil operations. Now, look. They're alone out there, Nick. There's a guy named Ben. Watchman or something. That's his shack on the dock. You got a gun, Nick? Yeah, how about you? And yeah, I got one. I wouldn't swear I can shoot it, though. Wait a minute. Doc's no fool, and that girl's in a tough spot. Pop, you sure they didn't see you follow him? I was real careful. I'd say they figured they're perfectly safe out there. Now, look, Nick. Grabbing the widow means they want dough. To get dough, they got to make a contact. The storekeeper said there's no phone in that shack. He said the watchman uses his phone all the time. They'd have to come to the store, then. That's how I figure it, Nick. If I was you, I'd wait right where we are. It's 11 o'clock. We'll wait half an hour. It's 11 o'clock, Ben. You sure that guy in the store lets you use the phone? He'll let me use it. You're all rather casual about this, aren't you? Seems to me I've heard that kidnapping is a very serious offense. I hope you're going to behave, Mrs. Halverson. We might have to get rough if you kick up a fuss. That would be rather silly of me, wouldn't it? That's what I like, Doc. A dame with sense. We'll contact Manning now, Mrs. Halverson. Manning will contact Nick Blake. Knowing me pretty well, Blake won't yell for the police. I'll put it to you this way. You're our security for a big loan. As soon as we get the money, Blake and Manning get the security. Simple. Very simple. Get going, Ben. That's a waste of the store. You better give me 20 minutes. You the watchman, bud, huh? Hey, what do you guys think Keep you're covered, Pop. Who's out in the shack? Are you kidding? There's nobody here for... You still think we're kidding? Okay. Okay. Just... Hey, just some friends of mine. Hey, they... girl, is she all right? Yeah. What did yeah, you leave the shack right. for? I... I went out the telephone. Uh, we better work fast, Nick. They'll be expecting him back. Take him under the pier, Al. Pop and I are going to case the shack. Hey, 
No use me looking for Ben out the window, Doc. I can't see nothing. Too foggy. Should have been back here ten minutes ago. Maybe he run into trouble. What trouble? You have a lot more trouble than what's happened to that watchman. Have I, Mrs. Halverson? That sum of money you're talking about is fantastic. Where could Mr. Manning raise so much money on such short notice? If you'd only trust me, let me out Wendy, of here. Wendy, huh? take a walk. See what's happened to that dumb clock. And don't you get lost. Okay, Doc. I won't be long. Hurt you, Nick? It's me, Pop. What'd you do with Windy? He's still out cold. I left him with Al. Anything stirring out in the dock? Uh, nothing I can see, Nick. I can hear something bumping, though, against the pilings. Yeah, a boat, probably. Tied up at the end of the pier. A boat? Nick, they could get in that boat and be gone while we're waiting for him here. Stay where you are, Pop. I'll make my way down to the shack. Uh, not alone, you won't. I was only kidding before, Nick. I can still handle a gun real good. Come on. Okay, but take it slow, Pop. And if you hear anything, duck behind a piling. I don't like this, Doc. First Ben and now Wendy. What's happened to him? If you'd only listen to me... Don't you to start me. giving me arguments. Go outside, shake and take a look. I told you before, you can't see a thing. What are you afraid of, ghosts? I just want to know why they ain't come back. I don't know why. And if you ask me, I don't think we should stay to find out. All right, we'll make a break then. Back to the car? Not me, Doc. That's the way they went. Get wise, will you? We'll use Ben's boat. Now get on that ladder out there and see if we can start the motor. You're coming with us, Mrs. Halverson. Where? Where do you think you can go? She's right. We'll have to come ashore sometime. If they spot her... They we'll... won't spot her. She won't be with us anymore. Wait a second, Doc. A snatch is one thing, but kill her... Get outside! Do as I tell you. Okay, I... I'll try and start the boat. I'm sorry, lady, but I'm taking no chances. Well, there's no reason why you can't stay here a little while longer. You're much too nervous. That man may have had trouble getting the phone call through in a remote spot Wendy like this. Wendy could have come back and told me, couldn't he? Windy doesn't seem overly intelligent to me. It's a good argument, lady. But come on, we're getting into that motorboat. Jake! What's the matter down there? Get that motor started. I'm afraid Jake can't hear you, Doc. Nick! Nick, look out! He's got a gun! Gladys, right, go back in the shack. Stand where you are, Miss Halverson. She's right in front of me, Nick. Go ahead and shoot if you want to. Where do you think you're going, Doc? Down the ladder and into that boat, and she's going with me. Now drop your gun. I said drop your gun! All right, Doc. I dropped the gun. No, but Nick. Just... No, don't come any closer. Pretty wild, Doc. Try again. It's all right, Nick. I got him covered. Pop, are you all... Nick. Nick. Did I get him? You got him, Pop. He's dead. Oh, in all my life, only decent thing I've ever done in all my life. We'll get a doctor. You'll be all right. I'm not complaining. Look after him. Nick's okay. I'll look after him. I, I always said, Nick. Pop. Poor old guy. I guess his time was up and mine just wasn't. Nobody lives forever. That's the way he always looked at it anyway. Who was he, Nick? Just an old guy down in his luck. He told me the other day, life goes by so fast you wake up one morning and find you're old. He was worried about us wasting time. Hadn't we better call the police? Yeah, sure. And then what, Nick? Will you still be going back to New York? Gladys, I... Pop needn't have worried about us, Nick. I think he knows that now. Bringing the story of Nick and Gladys unforgettably to life, our thanks to tonight's stars, Jane Wyman and Ronald Reagan, who join hands at the footlights for a curtain call. Ronnie, I certainly enjoyed your performance in Warner Brothers' The Voice of the Turtle, and I'm sure our listeners will, too. Incidentally, isn't this the first time you and Jane have teamed in radio together? Oh, well, not quite, Bill. We did a show together once before. But so long ago, you could almost call this our first time together. But if my memory's correct, you both were separately in radio before you came to Hollywood. That's right, Bill. Ronnie was a sports announcer back in Des Moines. Oh, way, way back, too. But I'm sure you haven't forgotten the touch. Oh, Bill, you never forget that. 30 seconds left to play, score 7-7. Seven to seven. They're out of the huddle up to the line of scrimmage. 
Ball is snapped to Felton. Felton fakes to Morney to Kerr. Hands off the ball to Kamansky on a reverse into the line. What a hole that interference opened up. Kamansky breaks into the clear. He's on Slippery Rock State Teacher's 35-yard line. Kamansky's down to the 30. Not a man around him. He's into the clear now. Kamansky on the 20, the 15, the 10, and Kamansky is over. Uh-oh. What happened? Kamansky hasn't got the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but you still have the knack, Ronnie. What did you do on the airways, Jane? Well, I was only in my teens then, Bill, singing hot swing on a local station in Missouri. Well, we've had a sample of Ronnie's delivery. How about one of yours? Well, Jane does her swinging on the golf course now, Bill. Tell me, did either of you ever give commercials on the air? Well, I could have given a very honest one for Lux Soap. I was using it even then and still do faithfully. And I wish we had television so our audience could see that very lovely Lux complexion. Well, while we're waiting for television, what's on deck for next week, Bill? Next Monday night, we bring our audience a long-awaited treat and a triple, triple attraction. First, one of Hollywood's greatest dramatic actresses, Ida Lupino, co-starred with that romantic screen personality, Zachary Scott, in a drama based on one of the best-selling novels of its time. Edna Ferber's Saratoga Trunk. An exciting saga of romance and action in the colorful era of the 1890s. Well, that ought to make great listening for your audience, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks to both of you. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ida Lupino and Zachary Scott in Saratoga Trunk. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Jane Wyman will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Johnny Belinda. Heard in tonight's cast were William Conrad as Doc... Bill Johnstone as Pop, Ira Grossell as Al, Herbert Butterfield as Manning, Francis Robinson as Penny, and Edwin Max, Tyler McVeigh, Eddie Marr, Herbert Rawlinson, and Edwin Cooper. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is rebroadcast to our men and women overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Nobody Lives Forever has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. Hollywood's own beauty soap. The complexion care used regularly by nine out of ten lovely screen stars. They depend on this fine white soap for the gentle, beautifying care million-dollar complexions must have. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Saratoga Trunk with Ida Lupino and Zachary Scott. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, by an overwhelming average of three to one. Families throughout America who compared toothpastes they were using at home preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Saratoga Trunk with Ida Lupino and Zachary Scott. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.